The ayes to the right, 412. The noes to the left, 202. So the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Unlock. MPs want more time. The result means there will be a third vote on Theresa May's deal next week. If she manages to win, she'll ask the EU for a short extension until the end of June. If she loses, she'll need much more time. At that point, MPs could suggest their own ways for breaking the deadlock, new ideas which may include a closer relationship with the EU. They would be taking control of the process. Mr Speaker, after the last few days of government chaos and some defeats, all of us now have the opportunity and the responsibility to work together to find a solution to the crisis facing this country, where the government has so dramatically failed to do so. In Europe, they're preparing their response. They want the British to deliver a credible justification for getting more time. EU Council Chief Donald Tusk tweeted he was in favour of a long delay. I will appeal to the EU27 to be open to a long extension if the UK finds it necessary to rethink its Brexit strategy and build consensus around it. And in Washington, a rare Brexit intervention from President Trump during a visit by the Irish Prime Minister. I hate to see it being everything being ripped apart right now. I don't think another vote would be possible because it would be very unfair to the people that won. They'd say, what do you mean you're going to take another vote? So that will be tough. But I thought it would happen. It did happen. And uh, both sides are very, very, uh, you know, they're cemented in. It's a, it's a tough situation. So it's a shame. Frankly, it's a shame. All eyes now turn to next week's third vote on Theresa May's deal. Will enough Brexit-supporting MPs change their minds? Will the prospect of a long delay and the possibility of a softer Brexit or no Brexit at all deliver the Prime Minister an improbable victory? It would be some kind of political miracle. Simon McGregor would TRT World, London. For more on this, Rajneesh Narula joins us from London. He is a professor of international business regulation at the University of Reading's Henley Business School. Thank you so much for joining us here on Money Talks. So talk to us about how Article 50 can be extended and for how long are we talking? Weeks, months, potentially years? Well, um, I mean, it depends upon so many factors right now. I think that uh, what uh, Theresa May has in mind is a, is a eight week extension or ten weeks extension till the end of May or somewhere in June. Um, that's if her deal goes through. So she's being optimistic that she's third time lucky. If, however, it doesn't go through next Tuesday, then I think the, the whole, everything's up for grabs. Uh, it, then they will need to ask for a much longer extension. Mm -hmm. The problem with asking for a long extension is that uh, uh, the EU is quite clear that they're, they're all suffer, suffering from Brexit exhaustion. Uh, everyone's been talking, and we have as well, for the last couple of years. And uh, they're tired of this bickering that's going on in the British uh, Parliament and amongst the government, uh, two sides of the government. So I think they want to have a clear plan uh, from the British government saying this is what we're going to do with these two years or one year or two months. So whatever request for an extension that comes, it has to be based on some actual plan rather than, you know, we want an extension but we're going to continue bickering. Nobody wants to hear that. They want to hear this is what we're going to do with the time. Uh, for the next two months or the next two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that Brex Brexit uh, fatigue is definitely a thing. So, but, but is an extension likely to make a difference? I mean, as you said, we've already gone about two years in and it seems like the UK is nowhere near uh, reaching a compromise on a deal. Uh, I mean, is it really even going to make a difference? Um, I think the heat of the moment uh, may help matters. I, they're trying right now, I think Theresa May is trying her best to persuade the, the Northern Irish uh, partners that she has, uh, uh, the Democratic Unionist Party, uh, that she's trying to persuade them and I, I, uh, to offering them various sweeteners to accept her, her side of the story. I think I predicted about two months ago that this would end up coming close to the wire. They will come into the 29th of March or thereabouts. And the last minute, because there's no credible alternative available, uh, she's expecting that Parliament will accept or will have no choice but to accept her, her, uh, her withdrawal agreement or the withdrawal agreement she's agreed to. 
since nobody can come up with a better alternative. So I think that, uh, that uh, all eyes are on Tuesday next week, and that will really determine the outcome of, uh, of the next year or six months or so. Mm -hmm. I know the commission, EU Commission President has said he's in favor of an extension, but if the EU yeah. does refuse to allow an extension to Article 50, what are the UK's options? Um, well, uh, they have to keep <laughs> re-voting re, uh, on this on this on the withdrawal agreement. Uh, I, uh, let's be clear: the EU is definitely all right with the end of May or early June, just before the elections or just before Parliament, European Parliament sits. So that's not a problem, really. That's that's fairly easy to sign off. What is a problem is whether they want two years or one year if they, if they don't take the withdrawal agreement. So that's going to be the, the sticking point. Um, if they ask for a two-year extension, uh, the EU will insist that this is because there's going to be another referendum or another election. So, uh, but nobody wants a, a referendum because that means that we sort of have an indefinite uh, transition period for the next God knows how long. All right, certainly still so many unanswered questions. Rajneesh Narula, thank you so much Indeed. for joining us here today on Money Talks.